Sometimes protection is not what it seems. In 2005, my job relocated my family and I from Venezuela to the American Midwest. So after I survived my first winter, it was time to visit my mom back in South America. The trip is everything I hoped for. It's time to return to the States. I'm in the plane, landing in Miami, when the captain announces, Homeland Security officers are boarding the plane. I hand them my passport and work visa. Suddenly, I'm the only passenger being marched off the plane and escorted into the room. That room, cold silence, no phone call. I don't know what's happening. My husband, Ricardo, is waiting for me to arrive in Chicago. I'm about to miss my connecting flight. What if I'm deported? I love my American life. Ten hours later, they hand me my passport with a big red stamp, revoked. Because I cannot stay in the U.S., my husband and I returned to Venezuela, and with the support of my former employer attorneys, I'm trying to get a new visa. We land in Caracas, we go to the U.S. Embassy. The diplomatic security officer keeps asking me, why were you in China? Who do you know in China? Who's your contact? I've never been to China. I don't have any contacts. Why the questions? Why was I taking off that plane? He finally reveals what happened and tells me that a smuggler in China is using my identity to smuggle women into the U.S. Just like that. The nightmare begins. For the next six years, I must prove I'm the real me over and over and over, nearly ruining my marriage, my career, and it takes a severe toll on my mental health and well-being. Sadly, my story is very common. According to the Javelin study, in the United States, there is a victim of identity theft every two seconds. There's a victim now. Another one. Just another one. Over 1.3 million children's identities are stolen each year. Why? A clean social security number and pretty history that normally remains on chat until adulthood. Identity theft and cybercrime can instantly happen, clicking an infected link, opening a malicious file, and more. According to Cybersecurity Ventures, if cybercrime were a country, it would be the third largest economy after the United States and China. Cybercrime has become the biggest illegal business. Now, research from Stanford University and a top cybersecurity organization found out that human errors cause approximately 88% of data breaches. And the reason we make mistakes and open the door to what I call cyber monsters is because of stress and distractions. Yes, I was distracted. I left on autopilot, unattentive until my identity was stolen. I pay no attention when someone asks for my personal sensitive information. I didn't know anything about cybersecurity. I was always busy with a million things to do, distracted. And here's the thing. Distractions aren't just dangerous. Distractions can be lethal. Distractions are poison to you and candy to cyber monsters. Cyber monsters love when you are distracted, when you are clicking on 
15, 20 different pages at once, answering your phone, your email, ruminating about the past, the future, and all trying to multitask. That is when you and your loved ones become easy prey. And you don't have to be rich, famous, or have a business making millions to become a cyber victim. And you can lose way more than just your identity, your finances, and your information. When I switch my career from information technology to cybersecurity, the knowledge hit me like a thunderbolt. I soon learned why and how identity theft and cybercrime can happen to anyone. So I began asking, what can I do? How can I help? So <laughs> what I did is I tried sharing terrifying statistics <laughs> so people can take action against cybercrime. Let me tell you, that did not go very well. <laughs> I couldn't even convince my husband, the most supportive person in my life. Overall, people wanted to know what cyber tool can shield them and be done. Now, don't get me wrong. If you are using cybersecurity tools, I applaud you. They are instrumental, but insufficient. Otherwise, cybercrime will not be this significant global issue. So I needed a new approach besides relying on fear. So I embark on a journey to discover what that is. Cybercrime was personal. That was a clue. Well-being practices become very important in my life. That was another clue. So what I uncover is that when cyber knowledge becomes personal, we care. When we realize that what is at stake is so much more than just our information and money, suddenly we care. Cybercrime doesn't have to be a threat. It can be a reason to find out what really matters to us. We must not delegate or outsource our safety or cybersecurity. And we can begin shifting our focus. We can incorporate practices that encourage us to be more present when we use technology. When I was 11 years old, my mom and I were evicted. And we moved to a shack. And in that world of many distractions, I chose to be an overcomer instead of a victim. You too can make that choice. I invite you to make three non-transferable choices every day so that you can protect yourself from cyber monsters. First, choose to be intentional. Act on purpose in your cyber world. 333 billion emails circulate the world daily. Now, most malicious emails are delivered during the workday between 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. when fatigue, stress, and distractions tend to pick. Now, we all check our phones 344 times a day. That is once every four minutes. Now, here's an example for you. Kathy's busy schedule keeps her hands full. Family, job, and life. Then comes a message from her sister. Hey, sis, you won't believe this. Click here. Next, a message from her bank about a credit card transaction she didn't make. It recommends a password reset. Kathy calls me thrilled. She spotted cyber monsters. She said, I am so intentional. 
before I click a link or open a file. They all mean we'll have click on autopilot. When you notice a scam, you're in power. You know you are in charge. You can choose to click or not. You are what you click. A simple action you can take. When you wake up, resist the temptation to check your phone. Instead, hold your phone and reflect about something or someone you're grateful for. Then, set a cyber intention for the day and choose to do it before breakfast. It could be something like a software update, a computer reboot, or cleaning up your apps. A single action a day can keep cyber monsters away. Second, choose to be aware. Know the basics about cybersecurity and cyber safety. Malware, malware means malicious software. And there are over 1 billion malware programs that are created, designed to access, harm, or destroy your computer, your network, or electronic devices. Now, malware also can run on anything that connects to the internet. When purchasing something online, Sandra was not aware that she could check the validity of a website. Sharing her personal sensitive information online, over the phone, or in a doctor's office could put her at risk. It did not occur to her that using the same password in multiple accounts is not secure. She simply didn't know how to do it. By the way, I am that Sandra. <laughs> When cyber knowledge becomes personal, you care. Be aware. Know how to spot the cyber monsters and what they want from you. Understand what are the things that are very important in your digital world, whether that is personally or in your business. Cyber knowledge helps you also regain your power and make the changes you need so you will be in charge of your cyber safety. Be aware online and offline. I love affirmations. I use them every day. So a simple action that you can take is to replace your password with a meaningful phrase or affirmation. I use a password manager, so I only remember one phrase. If you aren't ready for that, choose a password you care about and update it. Now, here's one example phrase. Today, today is the best day of my life. You can replace letters with numbers or special characters to make it more secure. Third, choose to be mindful. Be fully present. Every year, millions are affected by fraud. The FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, tracks the reported scams and the billions of dollars lost. Yet, we don't have a staff to quantify the harm or the emotional damage. Scams can happen in many forms. Romance scams, lottery, phone calls, tech support, and the list goes on and on. Now, our final example. Morgan, he gets an alarming message on his laptop. Your computer is infected and your antivirus has expired. Click this link or call this number immediately. Morgan? calls the number, and he's about to give computer access to the tech support on the line. Then he pauses, 
and realizes what's going on, he immediately hangs up. He has never used that particular software. Be mindful. Pay attention to your surroundings. When we are present, we make better decisions. A simple way to be mindful is to pause and breathe before your next click. A study from Stanford University shows that Breathing practices promote a relaxation and induce also our attention. So next time you're about to click on the link or in an email, social media feed, or answering an unknown phone call, pause. Take a deep breath. You can count silently. One, two, three, four. And slowly exhale. Do it a few times. In summary, be intentional. Be aware. Be mindful. Be I am. Yes, distractions are poison to you and candy to cyber monsters. Choosing to be I am puts you in the driver's seat of your cyber world. So you don't have to be easy prey and you can enjoy it. I invite you to write down the words, be, I am, so that you can remember. You can put this note in your computer, in your phone, and you can even stick it into your credit card. So it's a constant reminder to be, I am. You are in charge of reducing the chances of becoming an identity theft or cybercrime victim. Imagine that you are thriving using technology, that you are cyber savvy, and that you have peace of mind online. Be intentional. Be aware. Be mindful. Be I am. Be I am. Now. Thank you.